Previously on the bill. I'm your new sergeant. Callum Stone. Look, if I'm going to be acting inspector while you're on holiday, shouldn't we do some kind of handover or something? We follow procedure here and we also work as a team. So in future, you run everything past me, is that clear? Crystal. Now you need to put that knife down now. No, I'm sorting this, all right, mate? Just, just go away. No, we can't do that. Yes, you can. You heard what they said, Duncan. They're coppers. They're not going you... nowhere. Oh, now, now, Duncan. Now that's your name, right? You told them my name. <laughs> what did you do that for? Listen to me and calm down, Duncan. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, man. All right? I'm really sorry. I didn't mean her. Just... Well, okay, let's start again. What's your name? Stunken. And Duncan Wilde. Right, Duncan Wilde, on your feet. Right, Duncan, I'm going to search you now. Check Look, your pocket. She's going to be all right, isn't she? I didn't hurt her bad. I was just, it was just an accident. Well, Duncan Wilde, I'm arresting you on suspicion of possession of a controlled substance and assault. <laughs> you do not have to say anything, but it may arm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something that you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Right, mind your head. How is she? Yeah, it's a small but deep cut, but she won't go to St Hughes. We'll try and persuade her if you can. But I'll do a preliminary statement and find out how she knows Duncan. Well, laughing boy, it is clearly off his head, so I'm going to get him booked in and check that body for me to make sure he's up for an interview. All right. See ya. You need to get that properly treated. If I move the van, someone will take my pitch. I'll leave it here. I'll get you an ambulance to hospital. All right. I'll shut up first. Hey, what's your full name, then? It's Jade Morris. OK, and what happens today? It all happened all so quickly. I just turned on the fires and he burst in, shouting the odds. What was he saying? Something about being spied on. Spied on? By who? I don't know. These kids say some weird stuff sometimes. I've been in situations before. I mean, this is the Bronte, right? I've got a rape alarm and everything. But when he got the knife out, I was that scared. I thought, what's he going to do to me? And you've seen this lad before? Well, I heard you call his name. Look, OK, perhaps I've sold him a kebab once or twice. But it's not the Savoy Grill. You don't take reservations. What about the drugs activity on the Bronte? Have you seen anything? I don't go looking. No, but a lot of teenagers smoke dope. I mean, it's a pretty distinctive smell. And so does a griddle plate after eight hours of frying burgers and onions. Look, I do my hours and I go. Rum and coke's my poison, not spliff. I'm done. So I'm after the hospital then, or what? What you've got to do is you've got to undo all the nuts. Otherwise, you can't get the main yeah, hub. Of the PC stamp and green. Looking in desperate need of something to do. Well, as luck would have it. I have a shout for you. Raspberry Drive. Fella won't leave his ex's doorstep. I get the feeling Inspector Gold's on her way back, so you want us all looking busy? Off you go. Come on, we can do the exercise. Mm, you're telling me. <laughs> Perfect. This is the tenth incident on the Bronto estate this week. It's all minor stuff. Street robbery, MP3 players. It's all drugs for later. Mm, yeah, I had noticed. Huh. I thought acting inspectors were chained to the desk. Inspector Gold's back today, ain't she? Can't wait to meet her. Yeah, and you'll get your chance when she's through with Borough HQ. Oh, how'd you get on with Jay? Did you get a statement? Well, I got a version of events, but I don't think she's telling me the whole truth. No? She was a bit cagey how she knew Duncan. She didn't really want to talk. Is that the woman Duncan attacked? Who established the motive, yeah? Well, there doesn't seem to be any. I suppose you need one if you smoke skunk all day. What do we do? Downgrade it to a class C. Well, I can always legalise it. Tax it and regulate it like any other drug. You don't think that, do you? It's a point of view. Oh, whatever. When the dealers move in, crime follows. Okay. Maybe that kid's interview will give us some leads. What, Duncan? Thanks. No, he's bottom of the food chain. He's a customer, Diane. He knows where all the best deals are. Oh, so you're giving us instructions for interview now, are you? No way. I don't play with fire. You go and see what the FME's prognosis is. I'm going to get Duncan's dad is in the front office. Look, 
just leave us Give alone. Me five minutes. Well, it's kind of romantic, though, isn't it? He obviously loves his ex and can't bear to live without her. What's romantic about making a great big hoo-ha about something you're supposed to love? If you love him, you let him go off and be happy, wouldn't you? I never knew you were such an open guy. Come on, we're all going. I've been up all night. Come on, mate. Come on, come on. Let's move away, OK? What's your name? Chris. Chris Johnson with a K. OK, Chris, you just stay there. Have we got a call from a young lady, something about someone shouting outside her door? That's me. He's throwing flare pots, shouting abuse. Just leave me alone, Chris. You heard her. And you are, sir? Or his fiance, Ryan Chambers. We're supposed to be getting married today, but he won't leave us alone. Well, isn't it bad luck for the groom to see his bride on their wedding day? Well, I couldn't just leave her, could I? Who knows what he'd get up to? He's supposed to be my best mate. I didn't even know you were getting married. I threw it down a pub last night. OK, mate, let's just calm down, yeah? Put yourself to give me. But I think the best thing you can do is just go and leave and be all right. <laughs> okay, there you go. We done here? Yeah. You heard the man. Sling your hook and let us get on with the rest of our lives. Oh, well, I hope your wedding goes well. Thanks. Of course it will. Because she chose the right bloke. Oh, we'll send you a bit of wedding cake. You can shove your cake. Ah! Miss Johnson, I'm arresting you for assault. You're right. You have to say I want him done for this. Now yeah, you know what I've had to put up with. All court. that jealousy. Yeah, you do so, maybe give it in evidence. Let's get that sorted. I don't want you walking down the aisle with a black eye. But well, we'll get back to you about a statement. Good luck. <laughs> Poor guy. Still think it's romantic, do you? <laughs> right, we've been through your rights with you. And your dad, Collins, here. You sure you don't want a solicitor? All right. Why did you attack Jade Morris, Duncan? I'll ask you again. Just tell him, Duncan. I wasn't thinking straight. Stoned? Of course you were stoned. I don't know why I asked. Mr Wilde. Were you trying to rob her? Dad. Please. Wouldn't surprise me. He's been shoplifting as well. Selling stuff on to buy more skunk. <sighs> You're supposed to be on my side. Stick it up for me. How can I when you attack an innocent woman with a knife? Have you got no shame? I'm sorry I'm such a disappointment. Disappointment? That doesn't even begin to cover it. You throw everything away the and then you expect me there. to come and bail you out. Well, I've had enough. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry, Dad. It's about time you took some responsibility for yourself, Duncan. God, you're pathetic. Interview suspended 9.37. Mr Wilde, you need to calm down. PC Noble. I am, aren't I? I'm pathetic, like he says. I can't believe this. Haven't you got better things to do? I just got a bit worked up, that's all. Oh, please, can you let me go? I'm sorry, but I need to make sure you're not a danger to yourself or others. All grief and no glory. See, I are going to love this case. Hey, guys. Have you got something for us? A bit eager, aren't we? Are you twiddling your thumbs up there? No, we're just committed to our job, Tony, that's all. Oh, I we'll see. Well, in that case... If you're committed, we've got just the thing. <laughs> Is there another appropriate adult that we can call? Maybe Duncan's mother? His mum's not around. We split up last year. She walked out on us both and spoke to Duncan since. OK, look, we'll carry on. But you really do have to stay calm. Duncan Wilde, please. So what happens next? You're going to charge him? Actually, we'll probably just give him a caution. It's his first offence. What, do you think that'll make a difference? Well, it might depend on you as well. Oh, I'll try to make him stop, believe me. In fact, getting your call was the best news I've had for ages. It might sound harsh, but I think getting nicked was probably the wake-up call that boy needs. Sarge! He's hurt himself. Duncan, what have you done? We're going to need an ambulance. He's head butted the wall. Was this the kind of wake-up call you were after? Chair Oscar from 54, I need an ambulance to custody. How's your head? Well, maybe I'll finally knock some sense into it. I'm sure your dad didn't mean for it to happen. Was it to get back at me or just to get some attention? Hmm? Because I can't cope with any more of this. All right, if you're not going to talk to me, at least tell the officers what they need to know. All right, whatever. Now, this can be totally off the record. All we want to know is who you get your skunk from. I've got several guys. But the main one is Jade. Oh, come on, why do you think so many kids hang around her burger van? 
Jade Morris, the woman that you assaulted. Selling skunk from a burger van. Not just skunk. She's got herbalizer, AK-47, Northern Lights. Yeah, she puts them under the chips. But this morning she tried to scam me. The bag was light. That's why I lost it. Yes? Yeah, I can't talk now. I'm not even supposed to have my phone on. I'll be back as soon as. So how long has Jade been dealing? I don't know, nine months, a year. Do you know where the skunk comes from? Word is it's grown locally. No, no. Look, it seems like you've got everything you needed. Duncan, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to get going. We'll talk about this later, yeah? Yeah, that's what you always say. Mr. Wild, um, don't you think you should stay with your son? I'm a letting agent. I've got a list of appointments. Yeah, nothing comes between him and his work. Mr. Wild, mm -hmm. your son has just self-harmed. I think he could really use your support. We have a drugs referral worker that might be able to help, Duncan. Please don't try and tell me how to run my life. Mr. Wild, if you've got to go, then I'll have to put the caution off till tomorrow, and then you'll both have to come back to the station then. Oh, thanks very much. Nice. Unbelievable. Right, I'm going to go back to the station and see if Jade was involved with any of the other incidents that Sergeant Stone mentioned earlier. But while you're here, I want you to see if Jade's been discharged and he's on her way back to the Bronte. I want to do an oboe on the van. So you believe Duncan's story, then? Well, I think he's pulled himself together enough. Anyway, I want to find out. So, when did you and Marie split up? Two months ago. I was, was well guided. Then Ryan didn't return my calls. I thought I might have done something to upset him, like... So last night down a pub, another mate says to me, you going to a wedding? I says, what wedding? So you went round to the house this morning? All I wanted to do was talk to her, yeah? I thought, I thought if I could make her realise what we had together, you know, like... Like the time when we went down at New Kid, I taught her surfing. It was wicked, man. She loved it. <laughs> Listen, you shouldn't be hung up on one girl, all right? You're young, you should be putting it about. But I love her, don't you understand? And then I find out it's my best mate she's marrying. Well, that's the worst thing, isn't it? Well, wouldn't you go mental too? Well, you understand, right? Mr Johnson, you assaulted Ryan. Two of our officers saw you doing that. Yeah, and I put my hand up to that. Well, look at the context. I mean, how could they do that? They made a total fool out of me. Right, so what are you looking for then? Revenge? No, no way. No. Won't happen again, I promise. I've learnt my lesson. Scout's on her. Stuart, you won't mind stepping outside. Okay. Right, Phil. Right, Who wouldn't whack their mate one if they walked off with their old lady? All right, he's got it out of his system now. Oh, he's still wound up. I say we keep him in at least until after the wedding's over. You going soft? It's a waste of our time. Right, we tick all the boxes, we get him out of here as soon as possible. All right, Phil. This guy has to be totally gutted. Now, that kind of a trial really hurts a man. <laughs> right, interview terminated at 10.31. What happens now? You get bailed pending further inquiries. Great. Now, this is on the proviso. You don't go anywhere near Marie or Ryan again. You hear? Yeah, loud and clear. Looks like you could afford a bit more than takeout for lunch. Maybe that's not what's on the menu. Hang on, do you see all that money? Day's takings? What from the burgers or the skunk? I think we should follow. No, Jay's our target. We'll try and get an index. His car, black Lexus. Can't see the full plate. Since when do chips cost 20 quid? Eh? Hello? Oh, excuse me. I've just been watching you. Have a chip. Oh, what's this? Extra salt and pepper? Hiya, Jade. Do you mind sticking down for me, please? Whatever that little scrote's been telling you, it's a lie. Well, you won't mind emptying your pockets for me, then, will you? 
Do you want me to do it for you? Expecting a busy morning, were you? Can't get hold of anyone in the ivory tower. Phil and Stuart apparently too busy with the prisoner. Well, it's CID unavailable. Perhaps it's best if I lead the interviews. Be my guest. I'm now showing the suspect DN1. 22 one eighth bags of skunk cannabis found in your possession. Would you like to comment, Jade? I'm not saying nothing. Now, the information that we've received is that you are one of the biggest dealers on the Bronny. Who told you that? Duncan? That useless stoner. He hardly knows which way's up. Oh, so you do know him? Because you told me before that he didn't. I must admit, the burger van is very good cover. All the kids know where you're going to be, what time. I mean, they can even buy a bag of chips when they've got the munchies. I think you've got every angle covered. We watched you, Jade. We saw you sell scum to that lad. So is Duncan one of your clients, too? That way he kicked off. All right. OK. Duncan accused me of selling him short. But he was totally paranoid. I deal, right? But I'm small time. It's for holiday money. So who's your supplier? Is it that guy I saw arrive to pick up the takings? What guy? Jove Alexis. Designer suits. Ace kisser. Sorry. That's not possible. You see, I can't kiss anyone whilst I'm at work. It's against health and safety. I've got a photo. I don't care what you've got. I ain't grassing up no one, you're here. So charge me and bail me. We're done. And it's obvious they're in a relationship, Sarge, from the way that she kissed him. Which explains why she won't give him up. Never mind, we'll follow another lead. Index number on the car. I'm not partial. Hey, photograph. Let's have another look at that. It's really not the best image, is it? OK, run it through the imaging database anyway, you never know. Yeah. Hang on. I think I recognise him. From a previous collar? Yeah. Lee Clark. Yeah, came across him three years ago on an ABH. OK, run a check on him, find out what he's been up to, and then we'll go and search Jade's flat. Hey, Phil. Yeah? Didn't you guys just interview a Chris Johnson? Yeah, that's right. Well, there's been a call from the neighbour of the victim, Ryan Chambers. She saw him being bundled into a car about half an hour ago by some bloke. Will she get descriptions? Yeah, dark hair, olive skin. Sounds like Chris. I told you he wasn't stable, mate. Yeah, well, he said he'd leave well alone. Promised he'd behave. Yeah, well, since when did criminals start listening to what we tell them? Well, exactly. But Phil seems to have missed that one in the manual. Thanks to him, we could be looking at a love triangle about to turn very nasty. So, we did a comprehensive search on Clark, and he has all previous. To minor drug offences and the ABH in 2004. Never made it the court, case fell apart with this intimidation. Then he disappeared. Uh, last third he went up north, Manchester. There's no current address. Crimin? Really useful the intelligence about his involvement with skunk factories. And Duncan said skunk was being grown locally. Yeah, well, Lee Clark's name pops up. He could easily have moved his operation south. And all from my photograph, Sarge. Well, certainly gives us enough to pass this under CID. Possibly, yeah, but it'd be great to find out more before we pass it on. At least get an address for him. Give CID something concrete to work with. Well, I reckon Jade's flat's as good a place to start as any. Oh, Phil, you got a second? Sorry, mate, we can't. We're on a mission. Ah, oh, looks like they're busy. Should we go along with my plan? I expect a gold's back soon. I can always square it with her. I'll keep my spirits of gold up to speed. But before you go and search Jade's flat and bail her, I'll authorise you and PC Noble to do the obo. See if Lee Clark turns up. And then report back to me. Right. Right, there's definitely signs of a struggle. Furniture's been turned over and there's bloodstains. Right, well, the neighbour ID Chris too said there was shouting, and then he bundled Ryan to the back of his car. I ran a PNC check and it belongs to Chris. Well, you get a gold star. Well, that's not surprising seeing as you bailed a dangerous man earlier. This is your mess, mate. Joe, you need to get over to Marie Cox's house, 25 Rushbury Drive. Her fiancé's been abducted and made at risk. Marie Cox, DC Masters, Sunhill. Can I come in? If you're after a statement, it's not really a good time for me. I'm getting married today. So I hear. Nice dress. Marie, some of my colleagues have just phoned from Ryan's house. A neighbour had reported seeing Chris dragging Ryan out, putting him in his car and driving him off. 
What? Ryan's been kidnapped. It looks that way. And what I want to know is, has Chris ever done anything like this before? No. You said he was the jealous type. Was he ever violent towards you? Not towards me, no. But he was violent? He had a temper on him. The littlest thing could wind him up. Marie, what I want to know is, do you think Ryan's life could be in danger? <laughs> no. Oh, my God. What is it, Marie? Chris did sometimes carry a knife around with him, just for protection. But he wouldn't hurt Ryan. <clears throat> Would he? Well, he was pretty hacked off with the pair of you. Who knows what he's capable of. Hey, Phil, yeah, how's it going? Uniform had a sighting of Chris's car on Goldwyn Avenue, but we're not having much joy. Anything from Marie? It's not about Marie, it's about Chris and Ryan and their friendship. That's what really matters to a young lad. Give me that. Joe. Look, you need to find somewhere near Goldwyn Avenue where Chris and Ryan used to hang out. Okay. All right, thanks, Joe. Chris sometimes carries a knife. Now, losing your girl to your best mate would be enough to send anyone over the edge. I reckon he's about to do something very stupid. Hey, what makes you an authority on the mind of a jilted lover? It's happened to you, hasn't it? <laughs> I don't know why Chris is doing this. I tried my best. I even went to Newquay with him. Tried to surf. Useless I was. Hated it. All that cold and wet. All right, Marie. Imagine me on a surfboard. What a joke. That's when I turned to Ryan. Look, Marie, I know it must be tough being fought over by two blokes, but let's just try and focus, shall we? Now, can you think of anywhere where they might have gone? Somewhere where they used to hang out? Somewhere quiet where they might not be spotted? I'm sorry. What did they used to do together when they were kids? They were mad about their skateboards. Good. And where would they go to muck about? I don't know. Loads of places. Right. Let's make a list, shall we? How much longer are we going to wait, Sarge? No one's been within 50 yards of Jay's place. Fine. Another day, another dollar. Should we go and give him the good news? No, this just confirms the relationship between Jade and Lee, nothing else. Let's follow him, see where he goes. We might just catch him taking care of business. Sierra Oscar just turned into Cheatham Street, following a black Lexus driven by Lee Clark. So we're just going to sit here and follow him all day, Sarge, or can we pull him over and ask him some questions? We could get another uniform unit to pull him over and pretend it's a routine traffic stop. Or we could end up giving the old game away. Right. So what's your bright idea then, Sarge? This is another address that they could be operating from. We take a closer look. That's all right with you, Diane. Right, look at the windows. The curtains are all drawn. It's got tape here. Let's check the electrics. Yeah, yeah, he's rerouted it off the spur. Yeah, well, it all points to a skunk factory. We should have nicked him. We didn't go inside, Diane. We have to catch him out of the house. He had a set of keys. Yeah, he could have said he borrowed them. The place isn't his, anything. We have to make sure the skunk's actually been grown on the premises. Oh, well, let's go inside, then. Without a warrant? No. Not too much clearer than that. I don't want to give this guy any room to manoeuvre. Joe said that this is where Chris and Ryan first met, brought together by their love of skateboarding. Yeah, well, I really think that we're scraping the barrel now, aren't we? Listen, Ryan could be in serious danger. Now, of all the places that Marie mentioned, this could be the best plan. Hold on, that's the car. That's Chris's car. Look, that's the index. Ryan, it's the police. Chris! Right, I don't understand. You see, it was you dragging Ryan off. That's what the neighbour said. I know, but when we got here, he jumped me and shoved me in the boot. I would have pressed charges, yeah? <sighs> After you kidnapped him. Look, when I drove off with Ryan, I was mad, yeah? He stole the love of my life, right? But he started going all, please this and sorry that. 
I'll calm down a bit. I let him take advantage of my better nature. That's sweet. Anyway, when we got here, I said, let's talk like adults. I mean, I was the one who was being all reasonable, right? He was the one who resorted to violence. I could have suffocated in that boot. I wish. What was that? Uh, nothing, Stuart. Sure. See, I can't believe that he's even suggesting taking this any further after what he did to Ryan. All right, we've got a witness. All right, how about a trade-off? I'll get Ryan to drop the charges. I mean, the man just wants to get married, right? Well, I want my life back. All right, he's going to go and get a bottle of vodka, sit on his couch, get drunk, job done. Yeah, you should know. Meaning? Well, he's more experience the most. Chris, this is how it's going to work. Ryan's going to drop the charges, you're going to do the same, then you'll be quits. Oh, what about Marie? Well, you know how the saying goes, if you love someone, set them free. And you've wasted enough of our time as it is, thank you. Joe, it's Stuart. You can stand down. So, is Ryan turned up? Yep, just as I was leaving, he's agreed not to press charges. Mm. Wedding's back on, then? Yeah, God help us. Oh, listen, just for the record, next case you send us, I hope it's a little bit more interesting. Hey, I don't choose the cases. No, but just don't send us the Mickey Mouse ones, right? Spare my intelligence. Fair. Do you have a problem? No, Mum. Not anymore. Welcome back, Inspector Girl. Did you have a nice holiday? Hello, Mum. Uh, I'm Callum Stone, the new sergeant on the team. I oh, don't tell me there's a fire you want me to stand by because I've only just walked into the building. No, actually, the uniform's fine. Oh, we should try telling CID that. I try not to tell them anything, Mum. Only confuses them. Um, was this a meet and greet or did you have something? Actually, I was going to report to Acting Inspector Smith. Me and PC Noble have just got back from an obo and we think we found a skunk factory. A skunk factory? The CID know? Sorry. Shut to come in and close the door. Where'd the elbow go? Yeah, all right. We think we found a skunk factory on Cheeson Street. I'm just finding out who owns the property now. That'll be the results. Right, the flat's rented out through Colin Wilde's agency. I don't think he's got anything to do with it, do you? Duncan's dad, a drugs baron. I don't think so. Not after the way he tore into Duncan. Let's take this two specs of gold. Yeah, I think Sergeant Stone's there already. Good to have you back, Mum. Thank you. And it seems like I've timed it perfectly because Sergeant Stone's been bringing me up to speed on your case. Mum, I've run checks on both Jade's flat on Valance Street and 16 Cheatham Street. Lee Clark is renting Cheatham Street from Colin Wilde's agency. Colin kicked off about his son smoking skunk when we brought him in for possession. Trying to cover his tracks, maybe? Oh, he just doesn't know the kind of people he's letting his properties to. Cheatham Street's definitely our skunk factory, though. All the external evidence suggests it. Colin's worth talking to. Right, I'm going to contact the helicopter unit and put in a request for thermal imaging photography, right? You two get down to see Mr. Wilde. I'll do some background if you like. I've got a mate who managed to see ID who knew Clark in the previous life. Marvellous. Uh, shouldn't we pass this on to CID? Oh, come on, Smitty. I thought you'd jump at the chance to run with this. Yeah, of course. Good. CID don't need to know anything about this. We can keep this little beauty all to ourselves. All right, good. You know I'm right. Sergeant Stone's been trying to take over the case from the start. He took all the credit for getting the lead on Lee, and now he's gone behind your back. Bye. Mr. Wilde, is this urgent? I'm afraid so, yeah. There's phone by two o'clock. Will you tell him I'm going to be late? Um, are you the letting agent for 16 Cheatham Street? I am. Can you tell me who you let it to? Sorry, I can't give you that information. Can't or won't? Professional sensitivities, Sergeant. Some of my clients don't like me giving their names out. Well, presumably there's paperwork. The names must be on that. All right, OK. 16 Cheatham Street is a special case. The client likes to deal cash in hand. I see. Well, it's not uncommon, particularly in short-term leases. How short? Six months renewable after another six. That's not exactly good practice, is it? Do the owners know? Look, the owners just want their property rented out. As long as they get their money, they're happy. And, of course, you're not making any extra along the way for your special arrangement. Can we have the names of the owners, please? Well, I was earning a bit on the side. Things have been tight since my wife left. I needed the extra cash to tie me over. What's with the third degree, anyway? 
Are you using it as a knocking shot? No. Skunk factory. See, we believe that the woman that's been dealing to your son is being supplied by the bloke renting Cheatham Street. You got proof of this? Well, we're in the process of gathering evidence. And if we're right, then you've been renting a property to a known drug dealer with a direct link to your son. Okay. I rent the property to a guy called Lee Clark. How'd you contact him? Mobile phone, that's it. He comes in, pays in cash, first day of every month. Now that I've told you, you will put a stop to him, yeah? Well, we do all we can, Mr Wilde. But without any paperwork, it's going to be difficult. Hey! I've just come from Ibo. There was a call out to a drunken disorderly at the Dog and Apple, but the suspect got away before uniform arrived. <sighs> Scintillating stuff, Stuart. The pub is around the corner from St Stephen's, where Ryan and Maria are getting married. The suspect matches Chris's description. I was right, he couldn't let it lie. Hey. This case is a little bit close to home for you, Stuart. Am I right? I mean, you were engaged, weren't you? Well, this. You know what I mean? Yeah. She broke it off, so what? Don't tell me it was with your best mate. No, not exactly. So who was it then? <laughs> Listen, should we just drop it? I told you, so you wasn't hanging about like a lemon. <laughs> Wait, you got anything to do with this? <laughs> I've just got here. Oh, what? Via the dog and apple? I wanted a bottle of champagne to show the lovebirds no odd feelings, but the landlord didn't allow carry out. So you expect us to believe that you came here to wish these two luck? You had nothing to do with Ryan changing his mind? Maybe talking to Chris did make my head clear a bit. Oh, and when was this little chat? After you locked him in your boot? Yeah, I feel bad about that. I owe Chris big time. He stopped me making the biggest mistake of my life. Why is it with these people? Why can't they wait to the reception like everybody else? You, sit down. You, please, you Thank you. Hey, pull this behind us, yeah? Start again, yeah? What? You still want to be with me? After everything that's happened? You're still my girl, babe. Nothing's going to change as to her. Dunno. Come on. Well, that was a wedding to remember. Lucky escape, you mean. Can you get that nose seen to her? Yeah, we'll do. You know, you were dead right about Marie. If she can go behind your back with your best mate, well then she's liable to cheat on me and all. Still love her though, yeah? That's your choice, mate. Me? I'm better off without her. How are you? Uniform will drop you off at a dog and apple. You give this chambers back to whoever you got it from. And oi, Chavs, I don't want to see either one of you again. Do you understand me? I'll finish up here, lads. Look, if the custody sergeant asks you any questions, all you need to say is, I do. Yeah. 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 You don't know what it's like. Years of being a fat girl in class, a school choke. The only one who never got asked out. Maybe you took it a bit too far this time. The first time I felt really special. Well, Chris says he still loves you and it seems like a nice blow. Yeah. Isn't he lovely? Maybe I'll give him a second chance. Lucky Chris. But Ryan's a lucky man, avoiding young man's noose. Such a roast interview of marriage, Phil. It's no wonder you're separated. So come on, what happened? If she didn't dump you for your best mate, who was it? Look, it was her best mate, all right? She dumped you for another woman. It's got to be tough, then. Yeah, all right. Let's find something decent to get our teeth into, shall we? So you don't reckon that Colin Wilde's part of Lee Clark's operation? No, I think he was genuinely shocked when he found out it was skunk. Especially when we made the connection with Duncan. And when he knew, he was more than happy to give up Lee. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to help us much. The mobile phone number he gave us was a pay-as-you-go, no registered address. Well, that fits with how my contact in Manchester remembers him. Since Clark was clever, never left a paper trail behind him. He's also vicious. No convictions, but he put an officer in intensive care, isn't he? Oh, listen, I've got this lovely picture from the helicopter unit. All right? Now, 
These are the infrared images of the location. Now these red and yellow areas indicate the amount of heat coming from the buildings and apparently these fall into the usual parameters. But look at our suspect house. Wow. The heat is on. So now we know Clark's running a skunk factory in Cheatham Street. How many more is he operating? You know, the tricky thing is we need to find him on the scene. It's no good closing this one down if he's free to open up somewhere else. Yes, alert to a disturbance at jail dressing agents, Harker Avenue. That's Colin's place. All right, Smithy. Chair, what's good from 54? Show myself from 483, Daniel. Over. Colin. Hey. Colin hasn't done anything stupid. Maybe we should have told him what he was up to. Look, we needed him to open up, so telling him that Clark's running a skunk factory is a good way of doing it. Mum, mm -hmm. you investigating the skunk factory? Um, we're following up a few leads, yeah. So why weren't the CID informed? Because I decided that uniform would deal, and a senior officer, Philip, is my prerogative. Yeah, well, we'd like to be involved in the investigation from now on, though. Well, okay. I suppose we'll have to tell the DCI then, won't we? <sighs> Yeah, yeah don't, don't worry about the mess. I'll sort it out. Cheers, mate. So what happened here, Mr Wilde? There's nothing. Just some idiot coming off the street, spoiling for a fight. Well, that's not what your assistant just said. She's given me a description that matches that of Lee Clark. All right, it was him. So what did he do? Try to swing it, huh? He just lashed out. Took the phone, then. Right, Mr Wilde. Why don't you stop kidding yourself that you're in control of the situation and start cooperating? What happened? After you left, I was really angry. I wanted to get back at the person responsible for what's been happening to my son. How is Duncan? What's the point? I've not seen him since this morning. St. Hugh said he's been discharged. He's not been home and he's not answering his mobile. I had to do something to put it right. So you thought you'd call Lee Clark in rather than letting us deal with him? Yeah, I told him I knew what he was doing. I wanted him out. As you can see, he didn't take it very well. Did you tell him that we know about this as well? No, but I said if he hadn't cleared out Cheatham Street by five, I'd call you no argument. If you do hear anything about Duncan, you will tell me straight away, won't you? Yeah. All right, listen up, everyone. We don't have much time. Smithy. Right, this is Lee Clark. He's a known player from up north who's decided to grace us with his presence. Now, we believe he's been renting a property locally and that he's turned that into a skunk factory. Thermal Imaging has confirmed that 16 Cheatham Street is the skunk factory. Intelligence that we've received is that he's planning on clearing the place out before five. So for the raid, we're going to have two teams. Sergeant Stone will take the front of the house and I'll be at the back. We anticipate that all of the cannabis plants are going to be on the top floor. What else do you know about Clark? Well, uniform have all been briefed, so somebody will fill you in along the way. Right, Stu? Anything else? Yeah. My contact at Manchester CID says that if we take Clark down, he'll buy us all a crate of beer. Oh, yes. I'll match that for him and Nixon. Yes. Yes. Mum. So, what do you want us to do, exactly? Well, I've got just a job for you two, and it's a very key role. So you need to be on top form, all right? Don't you let me down. Well, I'm talking to the DCI when we get back. I'm not letting Inspector Gold get away with sticking us at the end of the road. Listen, Phil, about what I told you earlier. Let's keep it to that same thing. Yeah, totally understood. I mean, you wouldn't want people knowing that you were enough to turn a woman off the entire male race, would you? Uh, I believe the suspect is just passing me now in a maroon transit. Visual confirmation. Main suspect arrived. It's Duncan. Nah, don't go with me. He's like, this is Get lost. Stupid kid, he's gonna get himself hurt. Tough. Right, I'm gonna go and get him out of there. Diane, leave it. Diane. Duncan. Duncan, I need you to go over there now. I'm not doing nothing. No, just stay out. Lee Clark. Units, go, go, go! Give it up, Clark! Thank you.
me. Beth, go around the back and Gus tries to get out that way. Tony, go get the enforcer and call for backup. Sierra Hospital, 595. Go ahead, Tony. Backup, please. Street. Got a suspect, armed with a baseball bat. Ask him if it's Clark. Confirm suspect, Tony. Yeah, it's Lee Clark. He's got Diane trapped in a room. Let's have a look in there. Get out of the way! Give it up, Lee! You're not going anywhere. Yeah? Get out of me! Lee! Get out! Give it here. Got it? Quiet. Come on now! You're right. Oh, he really went for me. Why didn't you listen to me? I told you not to go after him. Can you see him? Anything? Do you hear what I said? Look, he's got to be there. Got him. Right. All units from 54. Suspect is on the garage roof. Oh, Shirley, right next door. All right, we'll head him off. Oh, Shirley, right next door. Shirley, right next door. Shirley, right next door. Shirley, right Give us that arm. Right, on your feet. On your feet. Lee Clark, do not struggle. I'm arresting you on suspicion of cultivating cannabis and assaulting a police officer, I warned you. You do not have to say anything, but it may own your defence. Oh, and Clark. He's been booked in. I thought he was a runner. Well, he tried, Mum, but Smithy took him out. Ooh, the raid sounds pure textbook. Not quite. We'll get in there. All right, I need to speak to Smithy because Mr. Wilde has come to see his son. Mum. Oh, Philip, thank you so much for your work today. You were invaluable. Oh, we didn't exactly do anything. We stood at the end of the road. Well, surely you didn't expect to run the raid coming into the case so late? No, I just wanted to be a little bit more involved, that's all. Oh, you want to be involved? Well, that's marvellous. Then you can do all the paperwork from now on in, all right? As long as that's not too Mickey Mouse for you. Because I won't want to underestimate your intelligence, do you know what I mean? No. Sarge, for the record, I did the right thing. You ignored my orders. If Duncan was vulnerable, Clark could have attacked him. Doing it for good reason doesn't always make it right, though, eh? You put the whole operation in jeopardy. Yeah, well, we got a great result. Yeah, we got a great result, but what if we hadn't? What if you got badly injured, or worse? I'm your supervising officer, Diane. You need to listen to me. I don't just say these things to make myself unpopular, whatever you might think. I'm trying to look after you. Okay. Point taken. We brought him back here for his own safety. You said he was trying to buy more dope? Yeah. He left St Hughes and tried to find Jade, but she was arrested, so I guess he asked around and found his way to Cheatham Street. How long did he go without skunk? Less than six hours. He's psychologically dependent, Mr Mark. It's hard for him to go for a day without a spliff. He needs some help. Look, he offered to make us a statement. That's good. I don't know him. But he does seem like a good lad. Your dad's here. Since your mum left, I guess I have just buried myself in my work. But I do care. Be quit. Will you let me do that? Can we go home now? Can we? Well, I was expecting a pile of paperwork on my first day back. Well, don't take offence, but this is fantastic. We're going to make a wonderful team. Now get yourself down the pub. Have a drink on me, and tomorrow we'll talk about your life as acting inspector. Nighty night. 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 Look, about earlier, getting Inspector Gold involved. Over the trail your toes. Where's that crate of beer in? I'll buy the first round, how's that? Oh, mine's a vodka and coke. Are you sure you're old enough to drink? Oh, shut up. Seriously, Sarge, good call. Stick your neck out for uniform. Oh. You're joining us yet? Yeah? Flat was your collar after all. No, got something else to do. Fair enough. See you later. Yeah, night. Right. Next time on 
on the field. Request attention to a missing child. He's giving five to one against for suicide. Eden's on a fall and three to one on murder if you're interested. Not one of that, AJ. Are you saying that she went there on purpose? Did she kill herself? I think you killed her so that she I could didn't tell, tell anyone what happened. There must have been someone else!